Great guys here. Quick update on the moose. Many people wondering about the moose. So I'm going to give you an update. The last video was probably two years ago. Um, maybe, maybe not that long. But anyway, a while ago. So uh, if you don't know the story of the moose, a bit of a recap. Basically, um, uh, it was bought at auction and the um, owners, the, yeah, the, the people from the auction house lied or the people who were selling it through the auction house, they probably just reprint whatever's given to them without checking anything so they uh yeah they basically this is from brazil and it's uh we had it blasted well anyway to take the great mystery out of everything the this used to be a van right so it had its roof that came up and then uh yeah so this was the original floor and this here, I was, I was cleaning all this off the other day um, to uh, fill a few holes and stuff. And I noticed that all this here is all hand beaten. So the, the guy in Brazil would have been squatting on the ground with a bit of steel or something. And, and just this was done with a chisel. And you can probably just see it right along. This is the factory pressed seam, nice and neat. And this is his version the biggest problem with uh joining up to there is there was no support underneath um and we've added we've added rhs sills we've added rhs along the sides here at the top we've got a leg support and we've got cross support under there and it can actually now carry some weight so thanks to all the metal work that's done you can see the old door splitty style door hence why it's got that odd shaped window um and i've given it a bit of a after the metal was welded in just giving it a bit of a, a bit of fiberglass filler and some uh bog to smooth over it that's all going to be um uh sanded smooth and then painted and then covered with probably upholstery so uh all this was all andrew fabricated all metal there all that there all that there this is actually an opening door you can see the line across the top what i've done is um screwed it closed because we don't have all the fittings for it yet um you can see the hinges on the bottom so the door opens down this way so um the idea was that the middle seat goes in there or the back seat goes in there and there's all that room behind it in there which is sort of wasted because you've got to get under the seat so if you if with this door here you can access through there um to put stuff in uh yeah so we'll put a couple of lockable latches on it there uh yeah so i wanted that all smooth down the side though so um basically what you do is you uh, you screw it closed where it's going to sit and then you you fill it all over the edges and everything you can see the seams sort of yeah anyway once that's filled you know that the levels are nice uh then you cut those seams out and then the door opens again you clean up all your edges then so uh so this had to have two new wheel arches they're all done um it's going to be put back on as a low light um yeah so we've got a a low light front stitched on the bottom of yeah the other front this here is all that was all hand fabricated as well you, if oh, i'm in the process of smoothing it up now because it's got all the little chisel marks and stuff like that so um yeah i estimate that we when the sandblaster the amount of work that we did before it even went to blasting there was probably uh eight to ten cans of bog used on this car um and we're down to a lot less than that because we've got yeah basically so much new sheet metal so uh now the only issue we had here was the inner support was a bit ordinary down in there We've still got to de-rust all that but it, this is bowed out a bit too much here 
So I thought now's the time while we're, before we do any filler work on this part here, um, just weld up the supports on the inside uh, at the level they should be, and then we're gonna cut this across here and then suck that sheet metal in and then we're closer to where we need to be. We just need to be close because it's, um, that's the thing. So that was a, obviously a highlight front end um, and we've stitched on the low light panel on the bottom. This has to be finished, welded off um, and we've got to put in some caps up to cover these so, so it looks more like a low light. But there's so much going on with this car. Oh, so the, now the biggest issue that Andrew's tackling next is the uh, the pregnant roof, as I call it, because it was a van. The height, the peak of a, a van roof is about in the middle, up here somewhere. So this was designed to raise up. Um, and you can see when I stripped off all the foam, how much work went into trying to suck that down when they made it into a dual cab. So the, um, so this high peak here, I don't know whether you can see it. I've, I wanna bring that down. So we're gonna cut this support here um, and make a cut in the sheet metal and try and flatten it out a bit. Cause if you look at a standard dual cab, um, it, it'll never be what a German dual cab is, but I mean, we wanna get it closer because I'm not, I'm not happy filling all that up. It just it just looks funny so you know so basically we're all we're doing on the floor now that it's all supported you can actually put something heavy on we, we won't talk about the this thing here we're probably going to make a little uh cover to sit over the top of that or, or something we'll work it out anyway um because th that water actually does it go in the front or the back up there oh no it goes into into the back part so as long as it doesn't enter into the cabin in the car um that's okay so that water will will just um that'll actually just probably run out but we might we might try and seal this up a bit better so less water gets in but we we're talking about shooting a coat of there's no point in doing any more filling on this i've just fiberglass where the joins and the holes were um putting a coat of um uh, like a Raptor or something like that something durable and waterproof uh, and then the possibility of maybe yeah putting a bit of a, a timber deck on the top um, I haven't talked to the owners about that yet but it's just in my an idea in my head that it would make it look nice and level all the way across we've got to allow the top the space for the drop sides and even the drop sides I don't know where I've put them they're a bit of a work of art. Here we are. So yeah, they've gone to great efforts to replicate the factory factory drop sides. It's it's uh, amazing the amount of time you must have spent with a hammer and the chisel and a bit of welding and all that. And uh, yeah, this is designed to these rounded corners are designed to. Um, all meet up at the back there so uh so yeah we're gonna get those tidied up as well because uh utes always look vw utes always look better with drop sides on on the back of it probably not really necessary but i mean at least you can put something in the back and not worry about it falling out so that's the update with the moon 